So right now we're live at the data center spot right here at the Co-Hotel and Suites. A couple of days ago we're here and IBM took us on data centers, cloud storage and you know the entire package. Amazingly, the data center has arrived in Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm about to be taking on a brief tour of what the data center is about, how it works, and um, you know all the details. Okay, I don't know the details. I'll be taking; they will take me through <laughs> everything. So, well, get ready for um, the most entertaining and most informative ten minutes or so of your life. At first appearances, this seems to be a standard 40-foot shipping container. But actually, the only, the only similarity this has with the, 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 the standard container that you'll see on the roads is actually the frame around it. And the reason we use this frame is it's compatible with all the main methods of transportation, it makes it easy to get around by truck or by ship. The walls themselves are actually considerably different. They are far thicker than you would see in a shipping container, but they contain insulated foam. And the reason we do that is to make sure that the external heat from the sun does not penetrate into the inside of the data center. So from an efficiency point of view, we only have to pay the power bill to cool the heat from the generators and not the heat from the sun. So as we move inside, you'll see what looks like a more traditional data center. Immediately when you look at the walls and you compare with the outside, you'll see a traditional look and feel of a data center. The area that we're studying now would typically contain the UPS, the batteries, and all the key support services required for a data centre. So your fire suppression would be in here, your control panels, your monitoring system, and your, your, your distribution units to feed the power into the IT part of the container. This is a, a standard 1200 mil deep rack that you'd see in most data centres. And the challenge we have from a technology point of view is how we fit this into the footprint of uh, a shipping container. The racks are actually mounted on rails. Okay. So if the technician needs to access the front, he can push this all the way back. So. Vice versa, if he needs to work at the rear, he can push this all the way forward. Mm. And to facilitate this movement and keep this live while it's running, we're using these flexible arms to make sure that all the cables remain connected, do not get tangled in the process mm -hmm. of that backward and forward movement. IBM as a services provider are technology agnostic. We will work with the customer and match their needs to the best technology available at that time in the moment. So as you go down here you will see some of the big brand names uh, and this really demonstrates the tr our true independence from this, but it also gives you a good idea of the flexibility of the system, that we've got all these different manufacturer equipment which can fit within this envelope and work seamlessly together. So the first piece that I'll talk about is, is really an, an APC cooling system we've got here. So it matches, it's got the same footprint as, as, a, as a server rack, but this just produces cold air. It draws in the hot air at the rear from, from the servers, passes it through this cooling unit and provides cold air to the front of the servers where it's sucked in and starts its journey all over again. So this unit is probably rated at 25 kilowatts and provides 25 kilowatts of cooling to the servers. And in this rack, we can also show you an alternative method of cooling. Okay. Uh, in, in the rear of this rack here, you will mm -hmm. see that the rear door is not a traditional rear door. It's in fact a what we call a rear door heat exchanger. So how does it work? So chilled water is passed through the heat exchanger at the back. So okay. as the hot air comes out of the back of the servers, mm -hmm. it passes through the cooling heat exchanger and comes out the back of cold air, where it recir again recirculates back as cold That's air great. to come into the front of the server. And again, that has a capacity to uh, take 25 kilowatts of cooling. So Amazing. you know. Uh, people don't, you know, and this is a really high end in terms of, of, of uh, power density. And of course conserving energy? Yes, it's very efficient. Mm -hmm. the, the closer you get the cooling to the source of the heat, mm. the more efficient it is, so mm. yes. So chilled water and that proximity to the, the heat source mm. really improves the efficiency. Yes. That's right. great, that's great. So as you walk through to the end, mm -hmm. so, so you know, for those of you that are used to the more traditional data center, you'll notice yes. there's not a raised floor here. Mm -hmm. And that's because we're using this very specialized cooling technique. We do also have products which do have the traditional raised floor. Okay. And when you walk into those, you would you feel that you're in a more traditional 
data center environment. Mm. And we do those for customers who want that ability to change, scale and flex, right. on, where on day one they're not actually sure where they're going. Mm. So that gives them the flexibility, okay. an empty space, and they can put their racks and complete the racks as they're required. That's amazing, but really in, is amazing. But in terms of expandability, mm -hmm. if this is not big enough, we can bolt one to the side, another identical, so think of building blocks, right. and we can put one to the side and we remove this wall mm -hmm. and it's double the space. Amazing. And the beauty is you can go that way as far as you want. You can keep adding them and adding them and adding them. Okay. And, and you know, there, there's no limit. Let's talk about power. Power yeah. is a major issue in Nigeria. Yeah. How, how efficient can this work with the situation we have in Nigeria? So first of all, the good news is they're very efficient. Because mm. it's a complete turnkey solution, okay. we're talking of PUUs of 1.5 or better even, even here in Nigeria. Mm. Um, the power supply, obviously, here in Nigeria, we have, to, you, know, you, have to, you have to use generators, no alternative. And again, we can provide these in an option. And again, we have packages where everything is in one container, or we can add, add additional containers. You can have one container full of your IT equipment mm. and, a, and a sister container next to it, which has the power generation in it and, and the cooling in it. And we just link the two with umbilical cords. Great. Tanya, we're talking about customized data centers. Right, um, customizing it to what the client wants. We've we'll tried as much as possible to productize some of these requirements such that customer can just tell us the basic information we require to give them a standardized offering. For instance, we have say six num six racks with average power consumption of five kilowatts per rack. So we can really give you that one off our shelf and then we we deliver that to you without much further um, you know wasting of time. Compared to if we have a customized approach that we need to take into consideration as an image, we will take more time. So, well, this is moving from Lagos to uh, Cameroon next. All right. What's your market like in Cameroon? Do you, do you have it, an idea? It's still developing, okay. uh, and that's the purpose of taking the roadshow there mm. because uh, you know we have to create awareness. You know, even even in this day of of the internet, mm -hmm. you know, Pete, you still can't replace that ability to touch and feel true, something true, and go and do it. True. And, and we, we have found this week people who have seen it on paper or, mm. or digitally mm -hmm. have been actually quite impressed or very impressed and have actually been able to come and look at it. Mm. Because a lot of them still have this, this, this false impression that, oh, it's just a shipping container that someone's really, you know, done a bit of DIY and converted into a data center. No, it's a far more sophisticated turnkey solution. Mm, okay. Um, fire incidents. How safe is this unit? Very safe in terms of uh, the materials it's made of, non-combustible. So, right. you know, we deliberately design it with non-combustible materials. Okay. Obviously, servers can catch fire. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, that's no different to one of these data centers or, or a traditional data center because a server is a server. But this still has the same types of fire detection and fire suppression as a normal data center. So it is, it, it is just as good as your traditional data center. Thank you Thank so you very much. much. Thank, you. Thank you. All right, Santa. Well, that's it. You've seen the data center in flesh. <laughs> this is it live. All right. It is no joke. It is not... Um, it's not a hoax. This is it. This is it. I mean, we're looking at it right now. This is technology at its peak brought to you by IBM. And you need to know how best to store your data. This is Tech City. I am Ben Larosa Koji. See you next time.